Okay, we're back, and this painting session is also a new pattern of mine. Uh, a Lakeville pumpkin seed, and uh, I've been doing pumpkin seeds a lot lately. Uh, I seem to like doing those, plus uh, I just got the Anarchy model stencils, which are perfect for, uh, for doing pumpkin seeds. And I shall show you they are. They look like these. Anarchymodels.co.uk Using a little bigger pattern. It'd be great for using for crappie patterns um, as well as pumpkin seeds. And then here's a really small one called a creature feature with little dots. So I already have it primed. Uh, they're going to be boring for you to watch washi paint to bait white but uh, so we're going to the next step after your base and that is a pearl white I like using a lot of pearls for undercoats and we'll just get a nice even coat here of pearl I'm using an Iwata HPCS Eclipse use it for seven years but I also use a, an Iwata HPCH for more detailed work all right, so we got this uh, the pearl white on, and I'm going to heat set. And I usually heat set in between every single coat or color layer. Okay, now we're going to start putting on our base colors. I like to start from the belly, work my way up. You can do it however well you like. But the next color is going to be a Comart, um, an opaque citron yellow. Love this color. It says yellow, but it looks a little more like green. But... Um, you'll see me spray it on. It's kind of a cross between the green and the yellow. Almost like a chartreuse, so if you like painting chartreuse baits, this is a good color too. A lot of people are trying to mix a chartreuse, and this is like a perfect color for it. Tighten this up a little bit. <clears throat> so we're going to paint just the belly, and a little bit down the sides. Not a lot of pressure. That is it. I went up a little higher than I wanted, but that's okay. When I do the next color, it'll overlap and uh, it'll blend nicely. So I'll heat set that and we'll go on to the next color. Okay, now we're going to paint the mid body of the bait. And I'm using Wicked this time. I like Wicked colors and Comart colors because they are pretty much airbrush ready. The only time I reduce them or thin them out is if I want more of a transparent uh, color. <clears throat> so this is uh, Wicked's Fluorescent Aqua. I painted this bait a few different ways and I found out that if you don't have the Aqua, another good option is Aztec Pearl Blue. Uh, sprayed on kind of light over the mid-body, but I get these from Dinger Baits, but that Pearl Blue is also a really good option. <clears throat> if you don't have the same colors I do, use what you have. Just get close. All right, it doesn't have to be exactly like mine. You're painting for you, not for me. And I'm going to thin this out just a little bit, a little bit of a reducer. And I'm thinning it out because there's a little bit of pearl. Right, we did a pearl white underneath that, and I want some of that to show through. Mix that up real good. Always test your brush off the bait. I learned that from experience and from a lot of mistakes. All right, so let's just spray lightly along the mid body. Take a couple coats. You don't have to go real dark. But I'm gonna heat set that, maybe do one more coat. I'd rather do multiple thin coats than one big heavy coat and run the risk of the paint running. So let's keep adding the coats until you get your desired desired color. I kind of like that. Let's do the other side. I'll heat set that and then we're going to do two coats. When you 
you're paying your bait, if you like the lighter color blue, stop right here. I'm just going to do an extra coat here, overlapping a little bit of that citron yellow we did earlier. fluorescent aqua. We'll move on to the next color. Okay, before I go on to the next color, I want to show you what I do <clears throat> to organize all my paint colors, uh, formulas, I guess. I have a little book here with pages and pages. Let's see if you can see that here. See, there's the lure and there's my recipes and I have a whole binder. I have like 32 different color patterns that I paint <clears throat> and I can't keep track of them all. Some I haven't painted in a few months and it would be really horrible to go back and try to paint it and go, oh, I forgot what color this is. Alright, so the next color we're painting right now, again Wicked, it's a uh, detailed moss green. When Wicked says detail in the name, it means it's more transparent, but I'm going to thin this out just a little bit. Again, I, do, I thin it out because I want still some of that pearl white from earlier to come through. A little bit of pearl effect. Alright, and we're just going to paint the, the top of the bait. Very lightly. Spray over the shoulders and let the overspray come down over the blue, or that aqua color. Alright. You don't have to spray a lot, a little goes a long way. So we have the citron yellow, fluorescent aqua, moss green. That's it, three colors. Now we'll start getting into the details. Now for the detail work. Here's some stencils I showed you earlier from Anarchy Models. <clears throat> and uh, the link to Anarchy Models will be in the description. I'll start with this creature feature stencil. It's got little tiny dots. This is great for craw patterns. And we're just going to use Calmart Red Oxide. And we're going to run just the bottom here into the yellow. A little bit of the yellow on the belly. I like the heat set before I move the stencil over so I don't smear the paint. And I'm going to put it a little bit on the gill as well. There we go. Some nice detail there. And then I'll flip it over. We'll do the other side. Ah. There you go. There's that. And then a little more on the gill. Heat set. And then I'll just hit the belly a little bit with some of this red oxide. Just slightly. Alright. <clears throat> now, with the same color, the red oxide, we're going to do a little bigger pattern here. Let me heat set this. And I'm gonna run this pattern just on the bottom here, right above the dots. Lightly. 
You don't have to go too dark. A little goes a long way. Alright. See, now we're starting to get a little character there. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. I've been using these stencils for a few months now, and I really like them. Some people think that when you use stencils, you lose some of the realism, but actually, these, you kind of, you're adding some realism. All right, there's the other, other side. We'll heat set this, and we'll move on. All right, we're going to continue on with these spots, <clears throat> but before I do that, if uh, you don't want to spend the, the money for stencils like this, or don't want to wait, <clears throat> another option is to get a little artist sponge like this. You can get them at any art store. And I put the paint in a little ceramic dish, wet the sponge a little bit, wring it out so it's not soaking wet, just lightly moist, and then dip the paint in the ceramic dish, and then dab lightly on the bait. That's another option. All right, so explore, you know, some of these techniques and see what works best for you. Um, Right now, we're going to move on to the next color, and I'm using uh, FW ink. This one's a little messy, you can't see the label. It's called Antelope Brown. It's, it's pretty close to a sepia color, and I'm going to use the same stencil we used earlier and do the top portion of the bait this time. I like to use a little lower pressure when using stencils. If you get too much pressure, the paint may find its way under the stencil, and you'll be pretty upset to get this far and then ruin the bait and have to start over. So, lay this stencil right over the top, and you don't have to do the whole bait all in one shot here. Just move it along. There you go. So I like the two different colors. We got the Indian Red and the Antelope Brown. Maybe I'll hit the back a little bit. And then we will flip it around and we'll do the other side. Okay, if you don't have these colors, you can get close or experiment with the colors you do have. I also recommend using a reference photo. I had a reference photo for this, and I made some tweaks on my own. <clears throat> there we go. Both sides are done. Maybe I'll hit the back a little bit. It's a little bit more. All right, we're getting close to the end, about three quarters of the way there. Okay, the next color we're gonna do is, this is also, also a wicked color, sepia. If you don't have sepia, get some, it's not so much a base color, uh, it's really used to enhance other colors, and this is where it kind of achieves some of the realism, is with sepia. And I'm gonna spray on the back, but I'm gonna spray so the overspray falls gradually over the sides, so you don't have a definitive line here. Just slightly, it's almost like a brown. A little bit on the shoulders there. A little darker down the spine. There we go. And there's that side. Heat set that will go on the next color. Okay, now we're gonna do some gill detail. And we're gonna put the white, we're gonna put a white gill mark on here. And I use these gill and fin wheels I get from Insane Custom Stencils. You can find them on Facebook, but they also have a website, insanecustomstencils.com. And <clears throat> I do two two gill marks, a white, and then using the same wheel, an offset of a black. And the reason I just don't go in and do black, which you can, but sometimes if the bait is darker, 
uh, more on the darker side. I like to add some white to the bait, give a bit of contrast. So, lower my pressure a little bit, and we'll lay the stencil right here. There's a little bit of white there. Now, when you do the other side, you have to flip the stencil around. Make sure where you just sprayed is wiped clean and dry clean, or else you're gonna get white on the back side here. And that would be horrible to ruin your bait this far along. There we go. And then, again, a little bit of contrast, hit a little bit of white on the throat. You don't have to, I like to. And we'll heat set that and we'll go on to the black. All right, now we're in the home stretch. <clears throat> what I do, or have been doing lately, is before I get the black on, I put these iridescent eyes on the bait. Now, <clears throat> because I'm gonna paint black over them, maybe not completely black, but just enough where you can get a little bit of that iridescent uh, effect to come through and it's worked out really well. I love how it works out. Uh, <clears throat> so I put the eyes on first, and so they don't fall off during your clear coat, put a little dot of super glue on the back side, and it holds them in really good. Again, we're gonna go back to our stencil, and remember I said we're gonna do an offset black, and then as I paint the gill mark, come down a little bit here where this gill outline is on the stencil, and it adds a really nice effect. So, now, lay your stencil right over the white, and then we're gonna offset it, so slide it forward a little bit. Spray, then follow the gill, and you get an effect kinda like that. Flip it around. Another one. I'm not blocking the camera with my arm. Lay the stencil over the white and then offset a little bit, a little shaky. Ah. Alright, I gotta tilt it more towards me so it may not be directly with the camera. Offset. There it is. Okay, now we're going to go back and lightly hit the eyes. Take it off the stand. See, I did the eyes. Not completely black, but a little bit of light. Give a really nice effect. Paint a little black on the nose. Now we're going to hit the spine. And a little bit on the shoulders darken up that sepia that we did earlier. That is looking good. Now, one last detail that I like to do. We just heat set that a little bit. I get a little bit of red. You can do any red color, any red brand. I put a little dab on a piece of tape. And then I have these nail salon detail tools. It's got a little small little end. And I put a little bit of paint on the end. And I dab just a little red accent on the gill. Just like that. Are the fish going to notice if you have a red accent? No, but sometimes you want to catch fishermen instead of fish. So, a little red dot, and there you have it. And I'll heat set that again, and then we're done. So the way I finish up my baits is I use Alumalite UV. I dip the bait, let it hang for three to five minutes, and then I have a UV light box to cure. So if you have any questions, please ask in the comments. If you're not a subscriber, please subscribe. I'm going to be putting out more videos. 
and thank you for watching.